In this video, we're going to be setting up a Mark 7 auto drive on a Dillon 1050 reloading press. The Mark 7 auto drive is shipped in a box that weighs 66 pounds and is 26 by 20 by 16. What's included in the box when you unpack the Mark 7 auto drive is the drive itself, the uh, base plate assembly with the motor and our electronics console, um, power cable for the, the unit, the belt, uh, zip ties for cable management, a filter for uh, Mr. Bullet Feeder, a tablet holder, a belt guard, the tablet with a USB cable, and a SD card for future software and firmware updates, the large sprocket that mounts to the 1050, and the hardware for mounting the 1050 to the Mark 7 drive. Tools required for assembly are a standard Allen key set, a 7 16 and a 9 16 socket set, or open-end wrench uh, will be adequate. The hardware that's included with the Mark 7 auto drive has seven pieces. Uh, four bolts are for mounting the 1050 to the base plate. Uh, two bolts are for mounting the sprocket uh, to our link bar on the 1050 input shaft. And then a set screw is inserted and then tightened down with a jam nut. And then there's three thumb screws for fastening the belt guard to the base plate. Before you install the Dillon 1050 to the Mark 7 auto drive, make sure that the Dillon 1050 is in full working order. First step with a 3 16 Allen key, remove the set screw and the D Dillon 1050 input shaft. Back the set screw completely out as we won't be using that. And remove the handle. Place one hand on the case feeder tube and the other hand on the Dillon 1050 input shaft. And move the unit to the base plate. Using the four quarter 20 hex heads, insert those into the Dillon base into our base plate. Make sure to thread in all four before you fully thread any of the bolts into the base plate. Next, we're going to insert our link bar into the 1050 input shaft and then take the socket. Make sure the socket is oriented up with the label upright. Um, refer to the user manual for the orientation of uh, the hole placement. The super uh, hole is labeled and then the RL hole has an indentation underneath it. Using the two bolts provided, insert the top bolt. And just get the thread started proceed to insert the bottom. Once those two bolts are fully tightened, take the set screw and then insert it into the input shaft. Next, take the sprocket cap and insert it into the sprocket. With a 916 socket, you can fully tighten the jam nut. After the large sp sprocket is installed onto the 1050 input shaft, uh, remove the cables from in between the motor and the console and set them aside. Next, we're going to install the belt. The first step is to loosen the two 3 8 bolts holding down the motor mount. Once they are loosened, push the motor forward and then Bring the press completely down. And sometimes it's a good idea to leave your hand on here so it doesn't go back up. First place the belt on the small sprocket and then wrap it as far as you can around the large sprocket and then slowly rotate it back. Now we can tension the belt using the 1050 handle 
you can pry the motor mount against the shoulder bolt, bolt on the base plate. The belt should have about a quarter inch of deflection uh, for proper tension. Next, we're going to attach the cables from the motor to the console. There are three cables attached to the motor. One has an eight pin connector. The second has a four pin connector. And the third is a USB cable from the back of the motor. Start with the USB cable, gets inserted the back of the console. Next, we'll connect the eight pin connector. The four pin connector comes around the side. Next, we're gonna mount the tablet holder to the Dillon case feeder pole. There's a nut on the back of the holder you can use to secure it at the angle and the orientation that you prefer. Next, the, the sides of the holder are inserted. And to lock the side inserts in place, there are small rubber inserts. The micro SD card uh, included with the tablet is not required to run the machine. Um, it will be used to install future software and firmware updates. Place the tablet on the holder. By sliding down the top right insert to allow access to the on off button. USB cable from the tablet to the console. The tablet power cord is located on the side of the console. And that gets inserted right next to the USB cable. All right, next we're going to install the belt guard over the belt. Um, it's easiest to start threading in the middle and the front thumb screw in place halfway. Next, place the belt card. And then fasten the rear thumb screw and then the front and middle. There are two style uh, Dillon low primer sensors. Um, this is the old style where the housing is bolted together. Uh, the new style does not have bolts through the center of the case. Uh, our mount works with both. If you have an old style, you remove these two bolts. And with the hardware that is included with the primer, replace the bolts with the longer bolts in the kit. You'll notice that the bolts protrude out the back of the, the primer. And you can take our mount and fasten it to the, the primer with the nuts provided, and then insert the primer assembly. The low primer assembly cable gets inserted into this connector on the console. Wire management zip ties have been included to secure the wires to the 1050. If you have a new, newer style low primer sensor, Insert our mount and line up the two small holes with the slots. And then with the Torx driver provided, fasten the self-tapping screws. We recommend adhering one of the zip tie mounts to the back of the 1050 right here for the low primer sensor.
Before you power on the machine, remove the ratchet assembly at the back of the Dillon 1050. If you have a Mr. Bullet feeder or a KISS bullet feeder, install our filter on top of the micro switch. When you're ready to power on the Mark 7, make sure the switch is in the off position. Insert the power secure. When you're setting up the final wiring uh, for the unit, it's important to keep the Dillon case feeder cable and the Mr. Bullet feeder cable away from the cabling from our tablet and from our console. And it's best to power these accessories on a separate power strip from the Mark 7 auto drive. To power on the Mark 7 auto drive, press and hold the power button on the tablet. The tablet will launch to, the, to our home screen. Once we're on the home screen, you can turn on the on-off switch on the console. When you're ready to start reloading, select Reloader, accept the waiver, and select Calibrate. Once the machine performs its initial calibration, you have full operation of the machine. The Mark 7 auto drive is shipped with a digital clutch set at zero. Uh, this is the lowest setting which is adequate to run the machine dry only. Before you start reloading or processing, increase this digital clutch to a value where the machine runs consistently. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions when you're setting up your machine, please contact us.